So welcome back students to one more some more examples of uh, insect bacterial mutualisms. The one which we are going to discuss now is the tube worm bacteria relationship. This type of relationship has mainly been found around uh, several thousand meters below the surface of the ocean uh, where the earth's crustal plates are being separating apart. And as a result, there are lots of vents, uh, hydrothermal vents sites are there, uh, mainly near the Galapagos Rift hydrothermal vent site. And the vent fluids, the, the fluids which have been coming from these vents, they have been found to be anoxic and they contain high concentrations of hydrogen sulfide and the temperature can be about 350 degrees centigrade. And the sea water uh, surrounding these vents has sulfide concentrations of about 250 micrometer and the temperature is around 10 to 20 degrees centigrade above the normal sea water temperature of uh, 2.1 degrees centigrade. So uh, the organisms which are living in the around this particular vent region they should be able to withstand the high temperature which is in the, which has been present in the surrounding area and at the same time because uh, hydrogen sulfide has been or the sulfide concentrations since they are being found to be very high it should be microbes or it should be the organisms which could be able to withstand this uh, high concentrations of sulfide as well. Here you can see that the giant red gutless tube worm that is the one which you can see here this is a tube worm okay it uh, will grow in these hydrothermal vents like many are growing over there and they provide an example for a mutualism okay between uh, bacteria that is chemolithotropic bacterial endosymbionts which will grow in the gut of these and of these tube bacteria and the tube worm what it does is it will take up the hydrogen sulfide from the sea water and bind it to its hemoglobin and the hydrogen sulfide is then transported in this form to the bacteria which will utilize the sulfide producing power to fix carbon dioxide in the Calvin cycle and the carbon dioxide required for this cycle is transported to the bacteria in three ways either the freely dissolved in the blood bound to the hemoglobin and in the form of organic acids such as malate and succinate and these acids are then further decarboxylated to release carbon dioxide in the trophosome which is uh, the region where the bacterial symbionts are being present and using this mechanism the bacteria will synthesize organic material from inorganic substances and the organic material is then supplied to the tube worm through the circulatory system and it serves as a main nutritional source for the tissue cells. Now, what does, uh, how does a bacteria survive here? The bacteria is mainly living what? In association with the what? With the tube worm itself. Within the tube worm, uh, see there is a gill plume here. There is a gill plume here and uh, this is the sea long of uh, of this gill of this tube worm and within this that has been associated the what bacteria so the bacteria gets a house for its living and it stays within the tube worm associated with it so that it can overcome from the high temperature as well as the uh, unhostile environment which has been present near the hydrothermal vent and uh, what what does bacteria does as we told here they will synthesize here they will take up all the uh, what the hemoglobin not hemoglobin the oxygen carbon dioxide and h2s and all that is being are absorbed which has been absorbed from the gill plume and transported to the blood cells of the trophosome and that has been utilized by the what these okay who are bringing all these that is being brought about by the blood cells of the what of the tube worm the two tube worms blood cells will bring oxygen carbon dioxide and h2s and that will get diffused back from the blood into the 
what endosymbiotic bacteria and then they will start utilizing it okay and uh, so they are oxidizing it which the bacteria is oxidizing it and some will fix carbon dioxide also and the reduced compounds which will be so will be utilized by the animal tissue for its growth so it is like as if you are storing the tube worm is storing some bacteria so that they will synthesize or it is storing a cook to cook food for itself i guess this is clear to you so you can have a look here this is a gill plumule the oxygen carbon dioxide and h2s and all is been diffusing and uh, uh, it moves inside and once it reaches uh, into the trophosome what happens uh, there that is being diffused into, from the blood it will diffuse into the trophosome cell and the bacteria will start utilizing it the sulfide is utilized the oxygen carbon dioxide is all being utilized sulfide is oxidized and the carbon dioxide is being fixed to form reduced carbon compounds and these are being translocated to the animal tissue so that the for giving room for the bacteria the tube worm is in turn getting food which has been fixed by the animal tissue so let me just brief you on uh, what is a tube worm bacterial relationship you can see that the tube worms or riftia pachytilla they are being mainly found in the rift hydrothermal vent sites and uh, these animals are being anchored inside a protective tube called the vestimentum and towards the anterior end there is a respiratory gill plume through which it respires and takes in oxygen and all that and inside the trunk of the worm is a trophosome consisting primarily of uh, endosymbiotic bacteria associated with cells and the blood vessels and at the posterior end of the animal is the opisthosome which will anchor the worm in its tube and oxygen carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide are absorbed through the gill plume and transported to the blood vessels blood cells of the trophosome and hydrogen sulfide is bound to the worm's hemoglobin and carried to the endosymbiotic bacteria now the bacteria which is being found in the what in the tube worm will oxidize the hydrogen sulfide and use some of the released energy to fix carbon dioxide in the calvin cycle and some of the reduced carbon compounds are synthesized by the endosymbiont and they are being translocated to the animal's tissue now let's just look into another example of an insect uh, microbial interaction and uh, something which we uh, come across is the aphid bachnera aphidicola interaction now what is an aphid an aphid is usually a sap feeding insect which has been found in various plant species and normally when these aphids when they feed upon the sap fluids the plant fluid will, will contain high concentrations of carbohydrates but various other nitrogenous substances such as am specific amino acids will be absent in these sap fluids so to overcome this nutritional deficiency what happens uh, the aphids are storing within them certain intracellular obligate endosymbionts called the bachnera aphidicola these bachnera aphidicola uh, they will provide the aphids with 10 essential amino acids especially tryptophan and if the insect is being treated with antibiotics what will happen the uh, what the bachnera will be completely been killed and at the same time the insect also dies because when the uh, bachnera is been killed what will happen the aphid also will be devoid of its essential amino acids and by giving antibiotics against the bacteria the aphids are in turn also be killed so there is a obligate mutualistic symbiotic relationship between the aphids as well as bachnera aphidicola so the inability of either of the partner to grow without the other indicates that the two organisms have undergone evol coevolution or they have evolved together and it has been estimated that the bachnera aphidicola aphid endosymbiosis was been established around uh, 150 million years ago now other than 
aphids and bachnura we also have another organism called the wolbachia uh, which is uh, a bacteria okay uh, rickettsia specifically speaking uh, wolbachia pipientis it's an endosymbiotic mainly found in 15 to 20 percentage of the insects and uh, you can see that uh, they control the production in, of this particular host. Even in various uh, mosquitoes and all that, you can see Wolbachia. And, uh, and it has been found that this microbial association is found to be a major factor in the development of the insect sex as well as the speciation in this wasp. And uh, Wolbachia can also cause cytoplasmic incompatibility in the insects, parthenogenesis in butterflies, as well as feminization of uh, genetic males in isopods. So these are some of the examples of uh, insect and microbial symbiotic relationships. Uh, I hope you remember it and uh, it's quite clear to you. Thank you with this session.